Hey YouTube, Do It Yourself Junkie 369 here and today is day 46 of our RV10 build and I've skipped a few days in videos because I didn't video myself doing all the prep setup for this very important set of steps. Um, we're covering two different sections of the manual. We're going to be gluing in or pro sealing in the trailing edge of the rudder, the trailing edge and the ribs on the elevators, and the ribs that go into the uh, trim tabs as well. So a lot of steps. The Pro Seal I have from Vans, they say on the website that it takes two hours. According to the number system and the part number they sold me, it's only supposed to take half an hour to set up. So I've got to do all that in half an hour, and to do that I'm going to enlist the help of my wife. And uh, another thing, I, I have the Pro Seal in the fridge right now. Uh, going to mix that up, bring it out here, and run with it and see how far I get. And as part of that, I have my elevators down here on the floor with the rivets that go in the tabs that fold over sit next to it. I have the rivets that go in this section here, plus the one pop countersink rivet that goes in there. And I have my, my squeezer set out and ready to go, my clamps, I have back here on this table, I have one elevator set up with the block of wood ready to go on it, and I have my other elevator on the other bench that I built over there in the same setup, block of wood ready to go. So basically I'll be putting in, I'll be putting the glue on the surfaces, putting the trim, or the, um, ribs in place, getting that trailing edge in place, and then letting my wife Clico it all together as I start working on the next piece. So the order is going to go trim tabs, so I'll put the foam in, put the clamps on, let my wife start uh, Clicoing that while I do the other trim tab, and while she's Clicoing the second trim tab, I'll be over here working on the elevator. And she'll come over behind me and Clico while I work on the second elevator, or the left one. She'll come over and Clico. And meanwhile, I have put the Pro Seal on the trailing edge of this. Well, first, I'll put the two halves of the L or the rudder together and make sure all the ribs are lined up in the correct orientation. Because they go, the left side goes on top of the right side, and then the uh, shear clip goes on top of both is how that works. So I want to make sure to get those in the right spot and then I'll put some Pro Seal on the uh, wedge piece, slide that into place and then she can come in and Clico and hold it apart if need be while I go in and put in the rivets on the ribs that go together with those and she'll be working with me holding it open as need be and Clicoing and then once that's done, we'll uh, real quick throw weight on all of those, get the wood into place, and I'll move into riveting this bottom edge, at which point when I finish that, um, should be everything together and hopefully within that 30 minute time frame. Right now it's about 80 degrees out in the garage here. So if that 30 minutes is true, that's at 70 degrees. Every 10 degrees above that temperature, it halves or your uh, setup time. So now we're looking at 15 minutes. So before that starts, I'm going to try to cool this garage down some. And I need to change my shirt. Just in case I get anything on a shirt, I want to make sure it's one that I don't care about. And then you'll probably see me strip gloves at some point. I'm thinking about wearing maybe three different sets of gloves so I can just pull them off as I go. So one thing I've done is I've set all the ribs in the orientation that they're going to go in.
Okay. Okay, so I did all that with my wife's help in an hour and 20 minutes. The point where we were pretty much done with all the Pro Seal was about 40 minutes and then about another hour to, or not, another 20 minutes. And then about another 20 minutes to get the weights on and do all the, the riveting that I had to do. And kind of, and then the last 20 minutes I've just been um, get, changing out some Clecos that weren't fitting well. You might notice I'm using a, a combination of the 330 seconds and the eighth inch, even though it's all 330 seconds holes with the countersinking and the uh, dimpling. The the 330 seconds weren't holding very well, and I can just barely get an eighth inch in there without really causing any damage. Um, originally, I was going for half an hour, and you guys might be wondering where I got that number from. Well, on the part number, I have MC-236-B1 half, but that part number isn't the actual material in there. It's actually CS3204 B-2, and the B-2 represents two hours. Um, with the temp that it is out here, uh, our working time is probably closer to an hour-ish, maybe an hour and a half. And uh, that was one thing. I had the fan blowing air from the house out here trying to get it down to 70 degrees. And like if it was, we were closer to 80 degrees, well, 80 degrees, your uh, time drops from two hours down to one hour. So luckily, this stuff, it's just enough to cover all these jobs, the uh, half ounce tube or whatever this was. I can't find the, the actual size, but it, it's the one that comes in the tube instead of the little uh, containers. So you mix it inside the tube, and uh, that size is just enough. I, I, pretty, I went pretty heavy with it, um, especially on the, the ribs themselves. I went probably a little bit thicker than the skim coating of 130 seconds that it recommends. And it was enough to do all this, plus whatever I got on my shirt and on the ground, and I got some of it on my arm. That's going to be real fun to get off later. And uh, at two hours working time at 70 degrees, you have enough time to do all of this as you saw, especially if you have help. Um, a third person would have been great, and another set of Clico pliers would have been great, and that would have freed me up to do some of the riveting while they were busy still Clicoing stuff together. And if you're stuck doing it by yourself, uh, you might have to break it up into two batches, which you can't do with just one tube, unfortunately. Um, but, as you probably saw, I was able to really get in there and do those blind rivets without anybody peeling the skin up for me. So, that's not absolutely necessary if you figure out how to work in that tight space which I had kind of done a test run while putting the Clecos in back when I was match drilling. I, I tried to put the Clecos in, reaching in there without peeling the skin up. Um, other than that, it went great. I'll probably put this video up by itself, and then I'll be waiting for a couple days to uh, come back out here. So it'll take, in this weather, it'll probably take up to 72 hours to completely set. Um, it'll be tack in about 24 hours, and so 24 hours, that's pretty late tomorrow, and I probably won't want to work on the plane after school, so I'll probably wait until the day after tomorrow to do some work on it at a more uh, reasonable hour. And basically at that point, I'm going to be going through, back to the, well, I'm going to be going back to the uh, rudder and finishing that up so I can get that section knocked out. And then from there, knock out the uh, 
elevators and then it will be on to the horizontal stabilizer which that should be really fun. Uh, no pro seal as far as I know working on that piece. And at, at that point when I finish these three sections or these two sections that will be three sections complete out of five or, or six if you count the final assembly section. And so at that point I can kind of consider the tail halfway done and that's probably since it's taken so long to get here because I've had to go to school it, it, this would probably be the time where I would order my wings. Unfortunately at this point I don't think I have enough money to get those. I've been trying to save up so we'll have to see how that goes. Um, hopefully I'm not sitting around waiting too long on those to get shipped to me because I, I have some other stuff I need to do besides airplane like I have a motorcycle that I'm painting that I need to get uh, done and sold so I free up some garage space. I have a mill I have to get rid of that way I can buy I want to buy a smithy to replace it so I have some more room it's a huge uh, huge mill like something like two or three ton so I want to do that, and if I'm working on the airplane, obviously I'm not doing that stuff, type of stuff. Plus, uh, since about June, I've been doing my uh, classroom work and my homework and everything. And it's, I haven't worked on the plane in a month because that has been like my sole focus is getting good grades in that class. And uh, I'm currently taking another one, hopefully... I don't have the same amount of workload with it, otherwise it'll be about the end of August before I get out here again. But because of the two classes we're switching over, I had enough downtime to come out here for the over the weekend and today to get this knocked out and make some progress on it. So, like I said, I'm just doing this one thing in this video. Um, that way you're more likely to watch all the way through it and not skip it and maybe pick up some stuff that I did. Um, one was the hand mixing. Make sure to do that uh, 50 strokes down and back while spinning it clock, clockwise. And then uh, the other thing is wear like two or three layers of gloves. And basically when one gloves, one set of gloves gets all nasty, you just peel them off and you're ready to go. And um, I actually think I went through five pair, but putting five pair on my hands would have been pretty difficult. So two to three pair, and then um, luckily my wife was lagging behind a little bit there, so I was able to put on gloves real quick and continue with what I was doing. Not a whole lot of downtime. And everything went well. And basically the big thing was pre-planning. We walked through it, like verbally, so we both knew what was going on and what needed to be done. And um, I wish I had given her a little bit more practice with putting Clecos in because at the beginning we ran into a little bit of hiccup with that. And other than that, just having everything pre-staged so you know exactly what it is and what you're doing, what steps have to be completed so you can just knock them out like that and not worry about time so much. Um, only other suggestion I would have would be do this in the middle of winter when it's cooler and so like if you're I think at 60 degrees or something your uh, set time all of a sudden goes up to four hours and 50 degrees gets you eight hours which is an obscene amount of time to get this done in. So hope you liked the video please hit the thumbs up if you did um, I guess if you hate it, you can go ahead and knock, knock it thumbs down. I don't exactly know what that does, um, but hopefully you found this useful. Um, if you're thinking about getting a kit after watching these, go for it. You can definitely do it. If you need help, um, contact me and I'll, I'll try to be helpful. And if you live close enough, I wouldn't mind coming out and working with you either. Um, even though I've got my own kit to work on, I, I'm, I love doing this type of stuff and I would gladly go and work on somebody else's kit whenever they need help. Um, I guess if you want to buy a used kit, there's a good one, or not a used kit, but a mostly built kit. There is a high quality one on the market right now. You'll have to go check out Bands Air Force for that. Um, 
I can't remember the guy's channel, but he he's uh, over in Illinois, Bloomington, Illinois area, and was building an RV tent. And as far as I know, he is like either almost done or done with the wings and was getting ready to move on to the uh, fuselage and has all that stuff. And he's letting it go for like 45000 And based on what I've seen of his work, it's top of the line. Great, great kit to buy. It would be an awesome kit. Especially since it's like five grand cheaper than everything that's into it. You're getting all the tools and the zip tips and everything else he bought for it. And if you're not looking for a pre-built kit and you go to Vans and order a kit, even if it's not an RV-10, please use my builder's number. They'll, uh, Vans will give me a kind of a finder's fee of a hundred bucks and that'll help me buy my wing kit. And other than that, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you want to get updates whenever videos come out. And see you in the next video.